today I have the 2018 Toyota Tundra. This is the SR5 model, but I will touch on higher trims. We're going to look at the exterior, the interior, and then we're going to go for a drive. Some may say the Tundra is outdated, but there's still a lot to like about it, so let's check it out. Hey y'all, thank you so much for tuning in for this 2018 Toyota Tundra SR5 Crew Max model review. I'm going to go over some of the features on the Limited and Platinum model as well. On this trim we get a gray honeycomb grill. On all Tundras we get an LED accent daytime running light. Here we have halogen, regular headlights, and fog lights, but you can get LEDs optional and in higher trims. These are 18 inch wheels, but if you move up in trim level you'll get 20 inch wheels. As you can see there we have the big i4's 5.7 liter v8 badge as well as a tundra stamped on the side nothing special about these mirrors but you can get towing mirrors and you can also get power folding and power dimming mirrors on the platinum model same with the door handles you can get chrome door handles on other models like i said this is the crew max and it has a ton of space in the back seat that i will show you in a little bit the tundra actually has a really long wheelbase but it is the second shortest full-size truck in the segment just behind the Nissan. I found that fairly interesting considering how huge that back door is. This truck also has 10.4 inches of ground clearance which is just phenomenal. That's better than the Silverado that I reviewed last week. I believe it's better than the F-150 as well. This is the 4x4 model. One thing I like about the bed here is we have the Tundra just stamped on the tailgate like that. This is an easy lift and lower tailgate that I'll show you here. One feature that I really like on the Tundra is you can see the back window is actually rolled down right now, just like the Forerunners, and that's exclusive to the Tundra. Let me show you this easy lift and lower tailgate. What that means, pull the handle, and it'll gently lower down and it's easier to lift. This does not have a bed liner, but you can get one, and I would always recommend that in the bed of a truck. You have traditional lights in the bed, as well as up on the cab. This is a fairly deep bed in terms of how far down it goes. On the Crew Max, we only get this 5.5 foot bed, but you can get a 6.5 or an 8.1 foot bed in the double cab version if you need to haul more stuff. The maximum payload on any Tundra is going to be 1,730 pounds. You can also get an optional deck rail system where you can have four upper tie down cleats that are rated at about 220 pounds each. Here we just have your basic built into the bed tie down cleats in each corner. Not to mention if you get one in Texas you can get one of these nifty stickers built here in San Antonio, Texas. It's time to look inside the cab. Starting out in these front seats first of all it's pretty high getting up in here. I don't have running boards there's no grab handle and at five foot nine like me it's definitely a little bit of a jump. Not a problem for me but if you have trouble getting in and out of a vehicle definitely recommend some running boards otherwise you have to grab onto the steering wheel. In this Plain Jane SR5 model, we only have four-way adjustable seats, and they are cloth, it's manual, there's no lumbar support, but you can get 10-way power adjustable fabric seats for a package in this SR5. You can move up to the limited trim to get 10-way power heated seats that are leather, and if you really want to get cush, you can go to the platinum trim and get ventilated seats. Another thing is this steering wheel is only tilt up and down. It doesn't telescope, but of course you can option up for that and get a telescoping wheel. And if you go way up, you can also get a power tilt and telescoping wheel. Overall, even though I don't have lumbar support, these seats are pretty comfortable. I really like how high they are up off the ground so my legs don't feel like they have to be outstretched. And I'm comfortable and I have plenty of space at 5'9". Since we have the SR5 model, standard on the SR5 is a six passenger configuration where we have the bench seat with the fold up armrest. You can get bucket seats for five seat configuration with the SR5. If you do limited platinum and up, you'll get bucket seats standard. One thing with that is we do have a little bit of under seat storage right here. You lift that up. And when we put this down, you can see the armrest right here. One thing I really don't like about it is just how stinking hard this thing is. Now I understand that this is not the traditional configuration. The five seat has a nicer armrest with a console shifter and just a better layout overall. But it's hard, but it's spacious. It has two giant cup holders, but it has a little ring inside. So 
anything that doesn't fit inside that ring honestly doesn't fit very well this thing will just slide all over the place when you're driving around it does have a nice slot right there I've actually been having my phone sitting here and it stays just fine over here we have one little cubby right there we have additional storage right here and it's really easy to lift out of the way if you just pull this lever and lift it up going over to the armrest we have a soft armrest but it's actually kind of a rubbery surface it's not the most comfortable but it gives you some padding we have automatic down passenger or driver window and it's only down it's not automatic any other way there are a couple bottle holders and a pretty good size compartment overall down below the door is not the most solid sounding but it has a good feel to it overall first thing you'll notice when you get into the tundra is that it's pretty utilitarian it's everything's pretty simple it's a it's a decent layout everything's very upright and you sit up pretty high Toyota has a standard key and fob configuration right here there's no smart key but that means we get to start it the old-fashioned way that's the 5.7 liter v8 that you hear right there as we go to the center screen right away it's pretty small but it gives you the information that you need you can have your trip computer on here a digital speedometer which is customizable you can even have your music information you can customize your uh, your cruise and your lane departure alert right there as well as any custom messages it might give you such as needing maintenance and then your customizable settings over here it gives you a pretty traditional gauge layout some other competitors will give you more digital information, but if you like a traditional look, then this is perfect for you. Toyota gives us a column shifter. Like I said, you can get a center gated console shifter down here in the limited and up. One thing I don't like about this is typically I like column shifters, but shift it into drive. And when I get it down there, it kind of locks in place but sometimes it will flip back up almost like it's loose it stays in drive but just one small complaint as we move down a little further you can see your mirror controls as well as light controls for here and the bed of the truck this is your automatic high beam button which is standard with TSSP and this is the button to roll down the back window that I showed you earlier I just wish that it was automatic because it's kind of annoying to lean down and reach when you're driving if you want to roll that down obviously you could come to a stop the steering wheel is the synthetic polyurethane material and I have a leather wrap steering wheel in my car and I really miss it after driving with this of course you can get leather wrap steering wheel and if you go with limited or up that will come standard the steering wheel in this also doesn't telescope it just tilts that's another thing that you can get as you upgrade your steering wheel I do like the design however I like this four spoke design with some good big bulky grip type up there it does have controls for your radio over here as well as voice controls and your calling feature when you move to the right you get controls for your center information display up above as well as some of your safety features right here up on the dash we have a nice tray and it does have a little bit of a grippy texture to it so things won't slide around quite so easily when we move down a little further we get Toyota's Entune system the very bare bones double cab will give you a 6.1 inch screen we have a 7 inch screen here there are some apps that you have if you've seen my uh, my Forerunner video or my Tacoma video you'll be familiar with this already but it's very easy to use it's not the most it's not the most advanced it's nothing like some of the modern day systems that you'll see in other vehicles but it's got everything you need you can hook up Bluetooth Sirius XM you've got an auxiliary port uh, it even still has a CD player that you don't always get in some vehicles now but overall it's a touch screen it works and you can see everything you need to and customize it as you please we do have a single zone climate control you can upgrade and especially once you get to the limited and platinum you'll have dual zone automatic climate control these these are big huge knobs they're easy to use they seem durable our four-wheel drive control is right here one thing I would like to see is an automatic button similar to the the Chevy Silverado that I saw earlier so it's almost like a full-time four-wheel drive if you please otherwise you have traditional two two-wheel drive four high and four low a trailer brake controller is over here it also comes with trailer sway control and you can see those settings on your information display once you have that engaged and you have something plugged in below the air conditioning controls we have a USB port auxiliary port as well as two more 12 volt power outlets 
Toyota gives us a locking glove box. It's moderate size, it's not too big. It would be nice to see one up higher like you might get in some competitors for additional storage, but it works. One thing I didn't mention is that this is actually a six speaker system. You'll start out with six speakers, but you can get up to a 12 speaker JBL system with the subwoofer on the higher trims. When we go to look overhead, we have a nice large visor with two lights for your vanity mirror and the whole visor slides. You've got a clip right here to store some papers as well as a sunglass holder in all these Crew Max models. A few upgrades, you can get the dimming rear view mirror and the passengers get a grab handle so it's easier for them to get in. Visibility is good, it's exactly what you would expect in a truck. Some of the pillars are large, however we do have a backup camera and we have a good line of sight out the back and the side doors. Toyota's backup camera is clear, but it's only one option. There's only one screen, there's no surround screen, and there's not even dynamic lines when you turn the wheel, which would be nice to have. As we move to the back seat, this is just massive back here in this Crew Max model. I think it's only behind the F-150 by just a little bit in terms of leg space. It's just huge. This is such a big vehicle. If you don't need something this big, you could always go with the double cab. But still, with that seat at where I would sit at 5'9", I've got tons of space. I've got really good headroom here as well. These seats aren't the most comfortable, but they're high enough off the floor to where you have a decent amount of thigh support. Not to mention, if you're short, there's a grab handle right here to make it easier to get in, and these doors open up nice and wide. As you can see in the back, I had a ton of legroom. As we look at the door, we get the same semi-cushioned armrest right here with a pretty large opening down below for some storage and a couple bottle holders. You can see just how much legroom there is there, and I showed you that this is a split folding seat. All you have to do is pull this handle, lift it up, lock it in place, and then you have a flat load floor here, somewhat flat there, a pretty good space to store something. It's easy to fold back down. In addition, we have a center folding armrest with two bottle holders. That grab handle is handy for most people to get up into the back. Tons of leg space at five foot nine, even at a good amount of foot space if the seat has to be pushed back. We also have air vents for our back seat passengers, which is always nice, as well as your standard 12 volt outlet. I have good headroom. Sunroofs are optional, but they are not standard on any single one of the Tundras. Since this vehicle is so wide, there's no problem putting another adult right here, at least a mid-sized adult, when you put this armrest back up. For the powertrain for the Tundra, you can get a 4.6 liter V8 or a 5.7 liter V8 that we have right here. With the 5.7, you'll get 381 horsepower and 401 pound-feet of torque, which is definitely powerful for this class. That's paired with a six-speed automatic transmission, and that's the only transmission you can get with the Tundras. With this 4x4 Crew Max model that we have here, you'll get 13 miles per gallon in the city and 17 on the highway. If you go with a two-wheel drive, that will bump up to 18 on the highway. This model comes standard with a 26.4 gallon fuel tank, but you can get a 38 gallon fuel tank, which you might need considering the fuel economy in this truck. The max that you can do with any Tundra for towing is 10,200 pounds, but in here we can tow 9,800 pounds with this Crew Max 4x4 configuration that we have. What do you say we go for a test drive? So what did you guys think of that exhaust? That's stock exhaust. You definitely got to appreciate the sound of a V8. All right. We're just about to take off. Whoa. Now this baby rumbles. I love the sound of a V8 and the feel of a V8. Obviously it takes a second to kick down, but this thing has got some good power. I mean, it's got 401 pound feet of torque. It's not gonna be quite as peppy as the three and a half liter EcoBoost, but compared to the other V8s in the segment that are about this size, it's, it's competitive with that. Going around some turns, the steering feels kind of loose. It's really easy to handle and steer, but it's not the most on point steering. It's not gonna make you feel confident. It doesn't feel as car-like as some other vehicles might and not car like but you know something that's not quite so nimble it's a pretty wide truck and it's, it's probably a good thing that they put some light steering on here 
Uh, it makes it a little easier to maneuver in parking lots and smaller spaces. It's comfortable to steer. You don't have to give a lot of effort to it. So we're going about 50. I'm going to get on it. All right. Oh, love it. 75. It's got some good power. There's no problem passing anybody on the highway with this. I am on the highway right now, actually, and one thing that I could complain about is I can hear a little bit of wind noise. Overall, it's a pretty quiet cabin, but the wind noise is more pronounced than that Silverado that I was in before this. To give you an idea, I have a decibel meter, and I don't know how accurate it is, and it's hard to get it on a good spot, but it's reading 62.5, which is definitely pretty quiet going 50 to 55 on a pretty smooth road. Obviously, it spikes up sometimes if we hit a little bump or something like that. And speaking of bumps, you can feel everything. The Tundra feels kind of a little floaty, a little loose with its suspension. We don't have an off-road suspension on here like the TRD off-road, but the thing about a suspension like that is it soaks everything up. You're not ever going to get jolted into the cab. It does feel a tad bit jittery, but it's, it's really not bad. It's, it's still comfortable to sit in here and ride. You're just going to feel a little bit more of a wavy type feel over some of the bumps. The turning radius on this thing is actually really impressive. If I remember correctly, this has the shortest and smallest turning radius of the full-size class, and you can feel that with this light, easy-to-move steering wheel. I haven't driven the smaller V8 engine, and I'm curious as to how that performs compared to this one. Oh, I love that. Anyways, if any of you have ever driven that smaller V8, or even some of the old V6s, let me know what you think. I've been in the 4Runner V6, the 4-liter V6, and the Tacoma 3.5 V6, and you can definitely tell that this has more power, obviously. Um, I would, you know, I definitely think for sure that 0-60, to 60, this thing could roast both of those, even though this is a big, heavy truck. One really neat thing for 2018 that Toyota did was make the TSSP standard across all Tundras. The TSSP is the safety system that gives us some, some, some of the features like the automatic braking with pedestrian detection, automatic high beams that I showed you guys earlier. If you have your bright lights on, it'll dim, or not dim, but it'll go back to normal headlights if it senses oncoming lights or if you're behind somebody, it'll do that automatically. It also has radar cruise control. Although it's not full speed, you do get radar cruise when you're on the highway or speeds above, I think it's maybe 25 or 30 miles per hour. And this Tundra also has lane departure alert. It doesn't have the lane keeping assist to where it actually guides you back into the line like the Highlander does or some of the other TSSP models, but it'll beep and it'll let you know if you're getting out of your lane. And you can turn all that stuff off. You don't have to have it on, but it's standard and it's there if you need it. Now this one doesn't have it, but you can also get blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. And that's an option. And when you get the higher models, you'll, you'll get that for sure. And that'll have the blind spot indicators in the mirror. So like I said earlier, with this 5.7 V8, this 2018 Toyota Tundra SR5, and all of them actually have the six speed transmission. Some of the new ones have seven, eight, 10 speed transmissions even. And that's a lot of gears. You know, Toyota has kept it pretty simple. They refreshed this for 2014 and haven't actually redesigned it since the 2007 model year. But this six speed is smooth, it's responsive, and you get on it. It has a bit of a delay, but it kicks in. And then when you're just coasting, going slower distance or slower speeds, it's really smooth. And I have no complaints whatsoever with this transmission. The eight speed and the 10 speeds obviously are gonna give you better fuel economy. And that's where this vehicle really suffers. In the time that I've been in here, since I started filming just five minutes ago or so, I've been getting 12.7 miles per gallon. And obviously that's with some times of revving it and flooring it. Earlier, when I wasn't, I wasn't on camera, I drove around town for a while and I got, I think it was 13.4 or 13.5 miles per gallon. So just a tad better than what it's rated at 13, but that's pretty sorry when it comes to uh, full-size trucks nowadays. I would definitely love to see how comfortable the leather seats are that you can get in the other trims, especially the, the heated and ventilated seats on the platinum level. With this SR5, like I said, you can upgrade 
your seats, you can get the 10-way power adjustable seats that are still fabric and they'll have lumbar support. Because my biggest complaint is that I've been fidgeting a little bit, just trying to get comfortable. I feel like the lumbar support on this is just, I don't know, something's weird about it and you can't adjust it. So it doesn't fit me too well, but maybe it'll fit you better. This Tundra's got some pretty big front brakes. In fact, I've, I've read that it's got the biggest brakes, front brakes in its class. And you know, I'm sure it does a good job with stopping a trailer, but just around town, the brakes feel a little soft. You know, you definitely have to give a good amount of weight into that brake pedal in order to really slow yourself down. Just in short, you know, partially slowing down situations, it's fine, but when you want to come to a full stop, you have to give it a little bit more pressure. When I'm on some rougher, uneven surfaces, like this kind of broken road with some gravel and some broken pavement, it soaks everything up pretty well. It feels like a pretty solid cab. And although I can't go off-road with this thing right now, I apologize for that. The more comments, likes, and subscribers that I have, the better chance I'll have of being able to take vehicles off-road in the future. Some of my final thoughts are that this thing's actually pretty fun to drive for a full-size truck. It's got a big, powerful engine. You sit up nice and high. It gives you a really good truck feel. There's a ton of space in the back seat. I nitpicked on some stuff, but really everything that I nitpicked on can be changed and upgraded to in the higher trims and on some packages. One more acceleration blip. Make sure you guys tell me what you thought of this truck. Are you considering one? Are you considering something else? I've seen the Chevy Silverado recently, so take a look at that. Hey y'all, thank you so much for watching my video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do down below for new weekly videos every single week. Also hit me up on social media. Find the links down below in the description for Prime Autotainment. Once again, leave some comments down below, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you next week.